two years ago, I flew to New York City to experience one of the biggest surprise camera announcements I have ever witnessed. This is the Outlaw 7 Mark Even more surprising was my initial reaction, which seemed to land somewhere between perplexed and completely overjoyed. Yeah, I mean, it was completely unexpected, right? Yeah. We thought just about Absolutely. any other camera except for this. Yeah. But here it is, and there's actually a lot more new than I first thought. But it wasn't long after this announcement, I eventually purchased the camera myself because I couldn't deny this simple fact. It was the best camera you could buy. But two years later, not everything has remained the same, and a camera that initially felt years ahead of its time is now becoming even harder to recommend. So let's be honest, I think the Sony a7R 4 announcement was one of the more perplexing announcements I've been to. I mean, at the time, the a7R 3 had been out less than two years. Nobody was even close to beating that camera. It was so good. And I remember when I first got this in and was working on a full review because I was so torn between just how awesome this camera was and yet how unnecessary it felt. But either way, within a couple months, I ended up buying one myself. And the reason why? There was just no other camera that was better than this one. But in those last two years, a lot has changed. And so if you're considering picking up one of these cameras, there are definitely some things you need to know. But if you are getting this camera and you want something a little more comprehensive and in-depth, I do have a full review on the camera, which you can check out, as well as a complete menu guide going over every item in this menu system, how to change it, what it does, my favorite settings for it, and a bunch of tutorials on the camera itself. So if you are picking up the a7R4 or the a7R4A, definitely check those out. I'll link them below. So there were some pretty big upgrades that came along with that as well, and namely the sensor, 61 megapixels, amazing dynamic range. I mean, this thing was setting DxO mark records like crazy, and the image quality is still absolutely stunning. Sony, if you think we need 100 megapixels next, probably not. I think I'm pretty set with 61. Plenty of resolution right here for anything you could think of. But also there was some big autofocus improvements. So what they called real-time autofocus tracking, which really just meant that Sony was able to combine features like its eye autofocus, subject recognition, all of that into its tracking system. So one system to rule it all. And once I tried it, it was absolutely unbelievable. I mean, two years later, this is still one of the best focusing cameras on the market, but we did have some hardware improvements overall, some new joysticks and button improvements, and also we had UHS-2 support on both of these card slots and a brand new viewfinder, which really helped sell this as an upgrade and made it a little bit better than I first thought. And all that sounds really good, but there are actually three things that have happened since then. Actually, two things, and then one is probably gonna happen really soon that might make you reconsider this camera. The first is that the competition has really started stepping things up. So in this space now we have the Nikon Z7 II, which honestly you could skip, and the Canon R5, which actually beats the Sony a7R4 in a few areas. Namely, it has a little bit better IBIS, a little bit better hardware, and slightly faster frame rates. But when it comes to video, it absolutely blows away the R4 to a degree that is just absolutely crazy. The second thing that happened is that Sony basically discontinued the a7R4 and instead changed it to the a7R4A, or sometimes you see like updated version of the Sony a7R4, which is 100 100% the exact same camera with a slightly higher resolution rear LCD screen. And all that sounds pretty good. I mean, technically a better screen would be a better camera, technical improvements right there. Except that when Sony did that, the price also jumped back to the original MSRP of $3,500, which is very high for a camera that is two years old. But the third change right here is that most likely we will very soon see an A7 IV 
4, which will likely be so good it could render a lot of features irrelevant on the Sony a7R 4 to the point that unless you absolutely needed over 50 megapixels, the Sony a7 IV might be even better. Now it's kind of funny because I say that and it kind of sounds a little negative, However, I purchased this camera myself. I shoot with it all the time. It is absolutely an amazing camera right here. So there are five reasons that you should definitely pick up the Sony a7R 4 still in 2021, and maybe three reasons that you might wanna hold back a bit. So definitely if you're looking at a camera like this, you wanna make sure you have some decent equipment coverage. Well, you probably heard of Professional Photographers of America or PPA, but now their equipment insurance program just got so much better. So PPA offers $15,000 worth of equipment insurance and now since May 1st they offer full replacement coverage with a flat $350 deductible or you can repair your equipment with a flat $50 deductible. You also get so much access to anything from discounts on Apple products to rentals, courses like crazy, like 1100 hours of courses right now. And then there's also contracts for virtually every type of photography. Go ahead and check it out. The link below is gonna get you $25 off. So go check it out and everything that they offer. Start separating yourself from other photographers and get insured today. So hands down, number one is image quality. This camera is just insane. So obviously you have 61 megapixels, but along with that, just epic dynamic range on this, like record setting dynamic range. I can underexpose this camera, preserve my highlights, really boost up my shadows and post. Almost no added grain or artifacting going on. Shadows at low ISO are completely clean. And then paired with that, you get 10 frames per second, which especially for a two year old camera, 61 megapixels at 10 frames per second. You do need to shoot compressed raw in order to get that. Uncompressed raw, I believe gets you to about six frames per second, but you still get amazing image quality paired with very fast frame rates. And that is something that not a lot of other cameras are really gonna give you. Now the second is something I don't usually talk about on cameras, and that is the APS-C crop mode. But on this camera, you have 61 megapixels. So the crop mode is very usable. So not only are you using it to get a little bit more reach, but also the buffer clears much faster and you get lower resolution files, which could be an advantage depending on what you're shooting. Also, you get almost 100% autofocus coverage in that crop mode. So actually better autofocus coverage. And if you are shooting video, which this is not my favorite camera for video, but in that APS-C crop mode, video is now 6K oversampled to 4K, which actually means it has more detail and looks a little bit better in that crop mode than in the full frame mode where you're doing a lot of pixel binning and stuff like that. So if you are using this camera, don't underestimate that APS-C crop mode. So number three is gonna be autofocus. And it's insane that two years later, this is still one of the best cameras on the market 567 AF points spread out across almost the entire frame. If you have not used this or a similar new Sony camera, the results are insane. It picks up the eye so early if you're doing portraits or anything like that. But overall, you just have some impeccable tracking across the entire frame and some of the best autofocus performance that blows away cameras that came out just this year. And this two-year-old camera is really beating them. But reason number four is going to be lenses. And that's if you're really comparing this to a lot of other cameras on the market, like the Nikon Z7 II or even Canon R5, Sony definitely has more lenses available, but also lenses that can really resolve these high resolution sensors. So yes, you can use adapters with older lenses on the Nikon and Canon, but can those lenses really keep up with 50 plus megapixels? This can, and so many of Sony's lenses can as well. Plus, if you wanna go cheaper, they have a lot of Tamron and Sigma options right here. So if you want more inexpensive lenses or more compact lenses, those are always an option as well. So definitely if you want the most comprehensive lens lineup with the most choices and some of the best image quality on here, this is a great camera to go with. The other reason I really love this camera is just how compact it is. And I know it's actually something I've complained on with some previous Sony cameras, as well as cameras like the A1, which I thought maybe should have a little bigger body style, but it actually works 
works very well for this. So first of all, it did get some build improvements on here, better weather sealing. The buttons feel so much nicer. The joystick on the back feels much nicer. And the grip also got a little bit deeper to the point where my pinky isn't really falling off of it anymore like the previous Sony cameras on there. So overall ergonomics just improved and you still have this really compact size on this. So if you want something that's pretty small, very convenient to take out if you're a landscape photographer, especially having something as compact that you can throw in your bag is really awesome. So yeah, Sony earned some points on this for being compact, but not sacrificing build quality like they used to in the past. This camera is definitely a big improvement. Now what's interesting is the rear LCD screen didn't make the cut for me. And the reason is even though this is a new better resolution and the justification for the A7R4A or updated version, the fact is it's still worse than the Nikon Z7 II and the Canon R5. So if you are considering getting this camera, the A7R4A to me is not really a big improvement. So unfortunately there are a couple of reasons you might not want to pick this camera up. And the first is going to be video. And what's interesting is that when this camera first came out, it was actually the best Sony camera for video, despite it being crazy high resolution, because it offered eye autofocus in video and it offered that 6K crop mode and a bunch of other things that other cameras didn't have. However, so much has changed in that last two years. So first of all, there are Sony cameras that now shoot unbelievable video, like the S3 and the Sony A1, and having 10-bit in those cameras made such a big difference. I don't like using this camera even as a B or C camera anymore. Compared to those cameras, the improvements are so good that this camera really has fallen along the wayside for me. The other thing is that the Canon R5 blows this camera away so much that there really is no contest. So if you're shooting video, the Canon R5 is going to be your best bet. Or if you plan on getting this and do want to shoot video, instead maybe look at the Sony A1 or adding a Sony A7S III to shoot video because those cameras look so much better than this. Now the other is file size. And what's interesting is that even though this camera is 61 megapixels, it is also one of the few cameras that does not have a medium raw or small raw shooting option, which means that if you wanna shoot raw, you are stuck with the entire resolution, which is huge. And that means the file sizes are insane. So uncompressed raw, which it has uncompressed or compressed, no lossless compressed. So uncompressed is over 120 megs. Compressed files are usually about 60 megs. And so absolutely massive file sizes and no way to change it beyond that. Now, if you do shoot JPEG, you do have the option of shooting a small or medium JPEG, lower resolution JPEG. But if you are shooting raw, you are going to be shooting over 60 megapixel files. So just insane resolution and insane file sizes. The other reason you might not wanna pick up this camera is going to be price. So along with that change in the updated resolution of the rear LCD screen and the change to the updated version A7R4A came a price increase back to the original MSRP at $3,500, which puts it insanely close to brand new cameras like the Canon R5 and even more expensive, vastly more expensive and like the Nikon Z7 or Z7 II. And that means that this camera is definitely high priced for it being an older camera, especially with some older features and missing options in video, especially. So unless you really want the high resolution, this is gonna be something to really consider. Plus, do keep in mind that we will most likely see an A7 IV camera very soon with a lot of the same abilities, maybe even some upgraded features for video on here with a slightly low resolution. So for me, if you're primarily a photographer not shooting a whole lot of video, this camera is still, even two years later, absolutely amazing with some of the best image quality and autofocus on the market. Now, as a price decreases a little bit, I think that's gonna help me recommend this camera even a little bit more with that sweet spot being probably about that $3,000 to $3,200 mark, which is where the A7R4 was before that rear LCD got the resolution bump. And I think that's really where this camera would excel. Now, if you do shoot video as well, I do think the Canon R5 is probably a better suited camera for you. It's really only if you're that hybrid shooter with some video needs, especially that $3,500 mark that this camera becomes more of a hard pass for me. But definitely if you need some more information on this camera, want some additional tutorials, go check out the links. I've got those below. Hope you guys are doing amazing. Stay tuned, some really cool videos on the way.